How Riot beat Blizzard. Let's see. Marketing, what? Marketing Monday. Okay, let's see. And Blizzard Entertainment. A tale of two companies. Yeah. Blizzard, a storied one going back to all the way to the 90s. Many legendary games, StarCraft, WarCraft, World of WarCraft, Overwatch, Riot Games, relatively recent. Uh, 10 years of League of Legends into a whole slew of new games. In this past week, Blizzard Entertainment has had probably the worst week in the history of its company. <laughs> what week was that? Games has had possibly the best. In this past week, this is what happened for Blizzard. Okay, number one, Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 were delayed to 2023 at the earliest. Largely due... I didn't, I missed this. When was this? November 26. How did I miss that it was delayed till 2023? Holy fuck. I call it now, those games are never coming out. Blizzard will be dead before those games fucking hit the store. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. To a number of leaders of Blizzard leaving all at once. <laughs> uh, and again, these were the two games at the last BlizzCon that they were sort of counting on to save the company. At a time when they needed good news the most, they were mm -hmm. given bad. Blizzard's <laughs> president, co-president, co I'm sorry, co-lead, Jen O'Neill, quit her job three months into the role after realizing yeah. she was only hired as a gesture of tokenism to have- See? See? This is why I say affirmative action works on paper, it does not work in practice, because this is exactly what you get. I'm not saying that she was an affirmative action hire, but this is literally what happens with affirmative action. The right people don't get cast for the role. Instead, they get people who shouldn't be there because they're either not equipped or not ready yet for it. Um, and then they cause a fuck up or they realize, hey, I didn't actually get this job because I deserve it. I got this job because they wanted me to. And I'm not even saying that she is actually undeserving of it. Based on her resume, she would have been very good working at Blizzard Entertainment. She has a very good resume. She knows what the fuck she's doing. The problem is the people at Blizzard weren't looking for her expertise. They were looking to tick a box because they fucking had to tick a box. That's what they had to do. So when she finally settled into a role and probably wanted to start leading is when she realized, well, they don't actually want me to lead. They just want me to sit here and look pretty is what they want. I have a woman in leadership and she realized she couldn't make any impact. So she openly said that and she quit three months in. Then they canceled BlizzCon. The effort required to put on BlizzCon is better spent supporting our teams, meaning we don't have enough people. <laughs> We can't put this on. It's going to be... And also, everyone's going to be angry at us. And so we're going to get... Yeah, I don't think it has to do with not enough people. Because if, if if Bobby Kuntick is anything to go by, he has no problem letting those workers work overtime to set up the stage. Like, do the game development during the day. And at night, you set up the fucking Anaheim Center. I think it has more to do with the fact that no one wants to watch it. Like if they had a BlizzCon now, it would be it would be more expensive to put on the BlizzCon than it would for people to actually fucking show up. Uh, I think the vast majority of people would just not even fucking show up. Yelled at by the fans the entire time, we're just not gonna do it. We're just not gonna do it. Also, even more importantly, they have nothing to announce. This is the key thing. I this, guarantee you. This might actually be the biggest reason they postponed it. There's nothing to push. There's nothing. Uh, the BlizzCon line, Pretorican, can only work if you have actual games to announce. Blizzard have nothing. <laughs> the two games that they could have announced got pushed back to 2023, right? So, <laughs> what else are you... Candy Crush, the next fucking adventure, right? Do we want to see another mobile fiasco at Blizzard? No. Uh, so, they, they have nothing. There's nothing to push. There's nothing to show. Um... So yeah, Chris, yeah, I already reacted to it, but it will be up on YouTube shortly, hopefully. If Diablo 4 was good and ready to launch, they would put on BlizzCon because they need the win. Worst of all, the most damning thing you could have happen to your company is, is Jesus himself 
said this. I think at this point it's safe to say Activision Blizzard is the most evil video game company <laughs> ever. <laughs> wow. This is a picture of the CEO of EA trying to smile. <laughs> yeah, because he's somebody pretty finally fucked up. knocked them off the list. Blizzard has done it. They've taken what we... I was like an unbeatable record, dude. But I, I just want to say I love fucking Moist Critical. I can't stop watching his videos. Like, that dude can make paint dry interesting. Uh, Zuli, how are you doing? But that's Blizzard's week. Let's talk about Riot Games week, okay? Riot Games breaks records with Arcane as Netflix's best rated show ever. Deserved. Now, I did a there's a lot of around the beginning and there's a lot of fans, but it's still phenomenally reviewed. The critic score is 100% and the audience score is 99%. Oh, Ziga, how are you doing? Uh, on a fan-related movie. On a fan-related movie, it's always like critic score 22%, audience score 93 And it's the first show since the launch of Squid Game to dethrone it. And that's just one thing. They also surprise dropped two new games out of nowhere. Blizzard can't find a game in the couch cushions, and Riot Games just dropped two games out of nowhere. Riot is fucking killing it, bro. Considering they have their MMO coming out, right? So Riot Games has an MMO that they're working on currently. They are truly bringing out games at a fucking blistering speed. And here's what I actually kind of like about Riot Games and the games that they bring out. Some of the games here on this list aren't actually meant to be billion dollar industries. They're not actually, like if, you, if you've ever seen Hextech Mayhem or Ruin King, these are not going to be games that, that's going to sell billions of dollars worth of shit, right? It's not really going to sell billions of dollars worth of shit. But it doesn't matter, because when you put all of that shit together, it, it starts turning a pretty penny, right? If you can just launch a bunch of games that make a, a couple of million, right? And that's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. You can you can easily sell a couple of million dollars worth of game copies. But if you have 10 of those, th that's a good chunk of fucking money, right? It's a good chunk of money. And it seems like that's the approach that Riot Games is following. Rather than trying to hit it out of the, out of the park every single time, with these massive titles that just kills it and should try to compete with League of Legends, why not just bring out a couple of games every year that is smaller in scope, smaller in size, isn't necessarily going to bring out, bring billions of dollars to the company, but it's going to pay the bills. It's going to keep the fucking, uh, it's going to keep the balance sheets ticking over. Are they just tossing them offhand at this point? And they announced two more games. Um, and, and they also released information on Project L. Uh, which looks amazing. And I was thinking, uh, wow, this week really summarizes what the people are really going to love that. I don't know why, but people seem to love those uh, side scroller fighting games for some reason. So, uh, yeah, they can only kill with that game. The past few years, it felt like where it's all slipping more towards Riot and away from Blizzard. And I found this Quora thread from 2017 where somebody asked the question, who's better, Riot or Blizzard? It's from 2017. And the responses were unanimous for Blizzard. This guy worked at both, and he said, for me, Blizzard is leagues, haha, -ha, above and beyond Riot in terms of creative diversity and maturity of intellectual properties. Back in 2017, so wrong. generally, most people would agree, Riot Games was, why even have the S, they're one game, and... So I'll admit, right, the problem that Riot Games suffered for a very long time, right? Yeah, I will obviously go for Noxus. Noxus is my fucking kingdom. It's my city-state within uh, the Riot universe. The problem that Riot Games faced for a very long time, and people don't even know this, but Riot Games actually sort of prototyped so many fucking games, right? So many games over the 10-year span of their history, yet none of those games ever really made it. Like, those games just got cancelled. Like, we would hear about a new Riot game and be like, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, at one point, I believe right at the beginning, Riot was actually gearing up to release, uh, like, a proper tower defense game. Like, a proper PC tower defense game. And everyone was really excited for it because it could be really cool. And then just the game got cancelled. It never actually made it out of the blocks. And now, suddenly, it seems like, like Riot is just releasing almost anything, right? As, as soon as someone comes up with it, they're just releasing it. And I'd love to know what exactly is the mindset uh, at Riot Games. 
Do they just let their developers make whatever the fuck they want to make and see how it goes? Because that used to be how Blizzard worked. That used to be how it worked at Blizzard. For those of you that don't know, uh, years back, I think this was 2015, 2016, they asked Mike Morheim, can we expect a Warcraft 4? And Mike Morheim said, well, that depends on the team. If the current team that is working on, uh, uh, I think at the time, StarCraft, when they're done, uh, if they want to work on a Warcraft 4, then sure, they can move to Warcraft 4, no problem, right? The teams used to decide what games they wanted to make next, and then either the game worked or the game didn't. Whereas I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think now it's a top-down thing. You make this, you make this, you make this. We need to make much, much money. It was not really a shit show. Lord just didn't really exist for a long time. It was just ex uh, champion had this. Why is the reason they joined the Rift? Uh, Shiono, I'm not talking about the lore here. Um, Gwintat, how you doing, bro? I'm not talking about the Riot lore. I've always been a very big fan of the Riot lore. Uh, they sort of put the lore on the back burner for a long time. Like when League first came out, you could always click on the champions and it would give you this page of the champion sort of backstory, right? Um, but then it's now moved, so you have to dig a little bit deeper to actually get to the backstory of the characters. But I've always been a huge fan of the lore, uh, specifically Noxus. Uh, that's why I love Noxus so much, because their, their backstory is just brilliant. And Blizzard is the king of the block. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons that they have been diverged, okay? But the main theme I wanna have is uh, innovation versus exploitation. One of these companies okay. was sued by the state of California for a culture of sexual harassment. One of these companies was also deeply tied to China and, and warned all of its casters to speak nothing about the Hong Kong situation. The other company's Blizzard. <laughs> Who did the same things, but worse. <laughs> it's both. And wow. Yet, for some all right, so I, I knew all of that, right? I, I knew that Riot was owned by Tencent. But for some reason, I just sort of thought, must be Blizzard he's talking about here. Because Riot Games solved most of their issues very quickly, very quietly. Uh, I still don't quite know how. How Riot managed to do it, especially the, 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 the state of California. And I still don't know exactly how they solved that issue. Um... But yeah. For some reason, Riot is on top of the world today. Let's start by talking about Arcane again, okay? Fantastic fucking show, my yep. god. Yep. I have no deep affinity for the League of Legends lore outside of maybe Fizz. It's a well-written show. Uh, the animation's good, I mean, I'm, just, I'm just super impressed. And uh, I'm not the only one, so this is what I was talking about. 100% <sighs> the Tomatometer, 98% audience score. Holy this fuck. This is, in That's my good. mind, far and away the best video game film or TV adaptation ever. Oh yeah, true. True. Uh, if you've ever seen uh, film or movies being adapted from video games, you'd know there's no reason to ever get excited. Uh, if you've ever watched any fucking movie that comes from a video game, you know it's, it's gonna be a shit show. It's not gonna work the way it should. And here you go. Here you go. They do it fucking right. Why? Because they chose the genre perfectly they knew that they had to go anime they knew that it wouldn't work as a live action film uh this is what world of warcraft should have been this is what the warcraft movie should have been it should have been this it should have been a series i said this i called this from the beginning when they announced the movie i said i don't think you can fit all the lore of world of warcraft into a fucking movie i don't see it happening you can't do it there's too much then they decided to start the movie in the most bonkers place you can ever fucking imagine, right? They start the movie in the middle of the lore. And before people go, what are you talking about? You saw no, none of the, the backstory of why the orcs had to flee, right? You saw none of the backstory of the humans and the, the denizens of Azeroth, right? You got in when the orcs fled and went to Azeroth. That's where we jump into the story. That's in the middle of uh, of the sort of, shall we say, the, the prologue of World of Warcraft. You're not jumping into the star. The original story should have been two series. One on Azeroth and one on Outland or Draenor, as it used to be called. 
You should have seen the original first season of the Orcs story. How the Orc chieftains came together, how the Orc tribes eventually came together, how they got misled and everything that led to it. Then you have a spin-off series that tells the story of the Draenei and the Eridar and how that whole shit show started with Sargeras' influence and how Sargeras' fell. Because in order to tell the story of the First War, you need all that other information. Because based on the Warcraft movie alone, the orcs were just hungry warlords that for some reason drinks demon blood. It doesn't actually give you any backstory. So if you're someone that doesn't know shit about the, War the World of Warcraft story, you're watching that movie and you're lost. Like, I, don't, I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't know what I'm watching. Right? And that's the that, that's the truth. That, that's what World of Warcraft, the story, should have been this one. It should have been an anime like this one. Tai Chi's, how you doing, bro? It feels like the movie uh, the movie was made for people who didn't know the lore before watching it. Also feels it was made by people who didn't know the lore either. Well, that's the, the funny thing. How many hours is that, Akalon? Nice of, the, of the, the story that I just proposed. No, no, you're talking about probably... I'd say you'd need 50, 50 to 60 hours to tell the story up to the first war before you can actually get into the story. Before you can even start with the first war. And then the first war is also a nightmare. You can't just tell a single story about the first war because there's a lot of things that happen with the orcs that has nothing to do with the humans and a lot of things there that happens with the humans that has a fuck all to do with the orcs. Then, of course, we haven't even started discussing the, the history of the trolls and the night elves, right? We haven't even started discussing the history of the elves. We haven't even started with that. And that actually happens way before, right? So the elven story, not even touched on yet. Th that still has to happen. So at the end of the day, you, you're going to fucking struggle to tell a story in World of Warcraft if you're trying to make it a movie can't be done in a movie. Movies just do not have the time allotment to make it work. You need something like this, an anime story that you can sort of push and push and push and keep bringing out episodes. Because here's the thing, I'm going to ask every single one of you in chat right now. Would you love to see the story of the fall of the High Elves, of Ajara and her High Elves? How would you like to see the story of the city being dragged down by Nazoth, by, by the, the Sundering, by the, well, not by Nazoth, by the Sundering, to see how that story unfolds. How many of you would fucking love to see that? Every single one of us would start watching and never stop. That's, that's the story that we want to fucking see. That's the story that needs to be told. Um, the, 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 the problem again with like Lord of the Rings is um, Lord of the Rings were books. The, the universe is vast, but the movie of Lord of the Rings focused on a specific story within that universe, right? And it could be done in a movie. World of Warcraft was never written that way. Um, it was never written that way. So, sadly, you can't do it. And, Knights, what I'm proposing is you start slow. You start with a first uh, season of your story and you work your way up. Riot actually managed to do this, I think, for much cheaper than most people thought because they used the company that isn't a large company. They didn't use Pixar or Disney or any of those fucking companies. They went to a small little company that does anime uh, or uh, animation rather, and that company made the game for them. And you can absolutely do that for World of Warcraft. Just going slow, one season at a time, telling the story of World of Warcraft would be amazing, I think would be absolutely amazing. Um, Having seen, I think, all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, then, you know, I'm sorry. You know what? Outside of the new Mari movie with Chris Pratt. <laughs> so the show was so good that my friend Jimmy Wong had to tweet a PSA. <laughs> As someone who has played League of Legends for eight years now, please don't play it just because you watched Arcane. <laughs> and I'm here to echo that PSA. <laughs> yeah, all right. Arcane is a fantastic show. I love it. <laughs> It will not be drawing me back in to play ranked no. League of Legends. No, that no, being no. said, I don't think these PSAs will have any, any effect because I can show you this graph. What do you guys think this graph is? This is a graph People of chess.com signups after yeah. the launch of Queen's Gambit. <laughs> that's the red line. And that's a game that is kind of intimidating 
for new players. League of Legends. What uh, game is that? Colored, uh, better user flow is only. Wait, what fucking game is that? The Queen's Gambit is about a game? Chess. Wait, people signed up to play chess after watching a movie about chess or a series about chess. That is fucking stupid. That is fucking stupid. Everyone knows what happens in chess. There's no real plot. I'm only gonna experience this on crack after arcane success. There's just no way. This is the World of Warcraft movie. <laughs> You'll notice <laughs> not quite as beloved. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. And this came out Jade, first, like Blizzard had the idea first of turning their game into a big uh, media property, making the IP live beyond video games. Yeah. And so what did they do differently than Blizzard in this situation? Well, first of all, uh, they were approached by many, many people to make League of Legends film and TV properties. And they turned them all down to use the people in-house. The people they put in charge of this are the people that made the cinematics. And that is an incredibly yeah, it's not brave decision. It's not quite in-house. They they did use a small company, uh, but yeah, some of it was done with the in-game team. Some of it was done by the sh uh, the team. I think they worked together. Uh, they didn't want to let somebody who had uh, more movie experience but no league experience make their uh, property, and it definitely shows in, in Arcane. What I always think of Hitman. Whoever made the Timothy Oliphant Hitman had never <laughs> even seen the game, bro. The way he acts and what he does is nothing like the game. People disliked the, the movie Hitman. I did not dislike it. Was it a brilliant movie? Like the best movie I've ever seen? Fuck no. It was a right movie. It was, it was okay. It was, it was just okay. It was like, uh, yeah. I, I would probably not tell people that if people asked me, I wouldn't be like, you have to see the Hitman. But if someone said, I'm going to see The Hitman, I'd be like, yeah, all right, it's a cool movie, right? It's not as, like, I'm, I must say, and I know this is completely off topic, but the most divisive, so chat, quickly, what is the most confusing and divisive series you've ever watched in your life? And by divisive, I mean, if someone asks you if they should see it, you don't know whether to say yes or no. 13 reasons why. For me, uh, it's that Shadow and Bones. I don't know if you guys have seen it on Netflix. Shadow and Bones. To this day, I've watched the whole first season and I still don't know if I like that show. I want to watch the show. I don't know if I like it. Hey, while I'm watching Shadow and Bones, I'm like, do I like this? <laughs> I don't know. Let's keep watching. And then I, I, I sit there again. And I'm like, do I? I don't know if I like this. I want to keep watching because I want to see what happens, but I don't know if I like this. Uh, and that's the whole way through. I cannot tell you whether I like that show or not. I genuinely can't. No, I have not watched Wheel of Time yet. And I don't know how anyone can hate Lost. I don't know how anyone can hate Lost. Lost was a brilliant TV show. Game, And so you can just tell there's a huge disconnect between the people that made the movie and people that made the game. Blizzard <laughs> partnered for their movie. <laughs> they partnered for their movie with Legendary Pictures to make a live action Warcraft movie back in 2006. And after mm -hmm. 10 years of switching directors, switching talent, swapping in and out, trying to find the right fit, they farted out a bad movie, a poorly received movie, 10 yep. years later to make some money. <laughs> a Blizzard cinematic was better than the World of Warcraft movie. True. And maybe Blizzard, a company that could have done this, that had years of excellent cinematics, could have given their team a chance, given them extra money, I will say, I don't even need the show, the TV show, to be this level of cinematics. But if it was this level of cinematics, I would not fucking mind. Like, imagine watching the TV show in this level of graphics. Bro. Bro. Motherfucker. Giving him a chance to go off and make a movie. Instead, I went with this. And ended up with a, a bad result. Secondly... And this is a major one. How both companies have responded to the rise of influencers in the past, let's say, five to seven years. Mm -hmm. Influencers and creators have drastically changed the gaming environment. And yeah. Companies that... They actually... I saw a report uh, just to sort of... Uh, well, in here. Uh, I saw a report the other day. The influencer landscape, so the econo economics of influencers, so YouTubers and Twitch streamers, is one of the fastest growing industries in the world. 
and uh, com if you if you include the impact that influencers have, it's actually one of the largest uh, industries in the world. Because influence influencers can literally make or break products right now. If you get enough influencers that say this is shit, it's shit and it sinks. It, it just does not go anywhere. Uh, if you get enough influencers to say, oh my God, what a good fucking game or what a good product, it goes. So the truth is, uh, yeah, Vols Volson is a very good example of influencers being paid to play the game, people picking it up and fucking loving it, right? Um, and then realizing, oh, wait, this is actually not that great. It's actually not as cool as we thought, right? So, and the truth is, I don't even know what this guy's going to say about the difference between how Riot deals with their influencers versus Blizzard. But I'll tell you this much, Blizzard has zero respect for their influencers. Zero. Um, I was invited by the African department for Blizzard, Activision Blizzard. I was invited to be a preferred content creator, right? Which basically means you see that uh, up there, you see the the limited or the, the collector's edition of Shadowlands. I got that for free. I got like a bunch of beta keys that I could give away. I got like a bunch of shit that Blizzard just gave me, right? Um, just just because uh, I was a preferred content creator. And then without even knowledge, without even an email. This was before the bullshit with Shadowlands. Uh, I was just dropped from the preferred content creator, like not even an email to say, hey, it's not working out for us. We we don't see the value in supporting you or whatever the fucking case might be. They just decided, no, screw it. We're just not going to send them emails anymore. I emailed them a couple of times like, hey, uh, could you explain to me why I'm no longer getting news updates? So not even getting free shit. Just as a preferred content creator, you get news updates directly from them. Like they email you the news and sometimes they do it a few hours before the news hits. Sort of telling you, hey, you can't make it live now, but you can make your video so long. So in at this time and this date, you can make your video immediately live, right? So you're live literally as the news hits. I got none of those things. It just stopped. It just dried up. I emailed them a couple of times going, hey, could you explain why I'm no longer getting this? No response. To this day, not a single response from Blizzard. So when I tell you Blizzard can go fuck themselves, I'm saying it from both a personal and a professional perspective. Blizzard can go fuck themselves. That understand them versus those that don't are seeing massive shifts in outcomes. Because like yeah. working with riots, <laughs> such a day and night difference. I had a uh -huh. riot event and then I had a Blizzard event mm -hmm. back to back, right? Mm -hmm. And riot paid me to go to an event. They also pay for like they gave me like five hundred dollars in Uber credits. And like to travel for the Blizzard event, they're like, fuck you, find your way here. I had to use Riot's Uber budget that they gave me so I can travel to a Blizzard event. Jesus. Yeah, you know, we're giving you exposure. You get advanced access. You know, that's your reward mm -hmm. kind of deal. Now. So here's the thing with Blizzard. I actually watched this entire podcast, uh, the OTV podcast. Um, the thing with Blizzard, uh, and this is the speaks volumes of Blizzard. They believe that just the fact that you get to show up to their things is enough. Like, I mean, you're getting the exposure, right? You're showing up to our things. The truth is, how many of you think that um, anyone at that table needs Blizzard's exposure? Like, I, can, I can guarantee you now, Disguise Toast does not need Blizzard's exposure. Uh, if anything, Blizzard needs his exposure. This dude is a fucking crazy big streamer, right? Uh, he's even bigger on YouTube, even though he, he doesn't make YouTube videos. He just sort of does his live streams, right? Um, he doesn't need Blizzard. Blizzard needs him. And Blizzard still haven't figured that out. Blizzard still believes that they are just, they are the shit, right? And everyone should bow down and suck penis. My editors will tell you, I'm all for paying exposure. <laughs> but when you're a big game company, it starts to look bad year after year when everybody else is realizing how important influencers are and paying them appropriately. Early in this video, he talks about how Riot Games made a bounty board to play League of Legends on stream. And they didn't care if you were Tyler1 or X. True, but I'm a sad man. Uh, the same can be said for, uh, for Hearthstone. In the same vein that Hearthstone made Disguise Toast, um, 
Disguise Toast most likely is responsible for millions of Hearthstone players actually picking up the game and liking it. That is the power of influencers. When you get to a certain size, you can play any game and that game uh, will actually go up. More people will start playing it because you're playing it, right? Um, because your community trusts your opinion, which is one of the reasons I've always said, as a content creator, you have to be very much... It's one of the reasons I refuse to take any sponsorships from mobile companies. So just this week, uh, just yesterday, I, I was actually emailed by a mobile game uh, willing to offer me $1,500 for a, a 45-second ad in one of my videos. That's it. They don't care how many views the video gets. They don't, they don't give a fuck. 45-second ad, they'll give me $1,500 for it. And that's less than... Fuck, if, if that is 10 minutes of work, that's a lot of work, right? It's not even 10 minutes of work. I said no. No, it wasn't Ray Shadow Ninja. This was a different... I can't even remember the name. Um, some palace something. Uh, I said no. I refuse to work with mobile companies because I hate mobile companies. I, I don't think mobile games is games. I, I think they're they're disgusting for the video game industry. So, uh, I believe that trust is everything. Your community must trust you, otherwise they won't they, they won't believe you when you say things. Um, so it's very important for content creators to keep that in mind. Like you have to have the trust of your community. If you don't, uh, that's very bad for you. Uh, but at the same time, the content creators drive gaming success. There's so many video games now that put. Um, there's so many video games now that put their sort of all of their budget into um, uh, into content creators. Like, if you take indie games, they'll take their entire marketing uh, budget and they'll put it into content creators. They won't market anywhere else. They just go to content creators and say, hey, can you, uh, can you play our game for six hours? And those content creators get paid a fuck ton, just FYI. Uh, I know specifically, personally, of a content creator, a streamer, uh, that gets paid about thirty to $35,000 for about four hours playing. He plays the game for four hours. They pay him $35,000. Good game. Thanks for playing. Doesn't have to like it. Like, there's no sort of strings attached. He doesn't have to go, best game I've ever played. He just needs to play it. And then they'll pay him a shit ton of money to play it. Right? Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of money there. And games have figured out that's where the success lies. If you can get your game to pop off on Twitch, your game will pop off. XQC. If you played League before or you didn't, then Blizzard did the same thing for Hearthstone. But when Toast tried to do it, they said no. Only if you've never played Hearthstone will we pay you. <laughs> if we've already got you playing Hearthstone, you don't get shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that sort of cheap uh... ass attitude that like us, us first kind of thing is so backwards looking. And it, it's an arrogant outlook is what it is. Later in the video, he talks about... So Jade, just to be clear here, I'm sure there are some mobile games out there that isn't parasitic. As someone who doesn't really play mobile games, just see what people go through when they play mobile games, I haven't seen one yet. I'm sure there are some, but as far as I'm concerned, mobile games is literally slot machines, that's it. I mean, you have mobile games that, that advertise themselves as RPGs where you don't even play. You just sit back and watch your character run and shit falls out of it and then it wants you to pay for this and it wants you to pay for that and it wants you to pay for this and it wants you to pay for that and it just fucking, it, it plays itself. You just basically watch shit fall out of the sky. Uh, that's it. So as far as I'm concerned, um, I don't think the mobile gaming industry is healthy for gaming at all. I think most of the bad ideas in PC video games comes from the mobile industry. I think the mobile gaming industry drives this because the mobile gaming industry makes billions and billions of dollars more than PC and console uh, gaming industry combined. And, I, and I, I genuinely fucking hate that. I hate that my PC games are looking at mobile games and thinking, oh my God, we can do that too, right? I, I hate that. I, I don't want to play a game that basically plays itself and I just get new shit. I just get shit for free and it's all sort of worked with... Uh, so the thing that actually pisses me off most about mo about the mobile gaming industry is the games are literally designed to get you addicted and keep you addicted. 
that's why they work with i watched this entire speech by like i can't remember what company he works for it's a massive fucking company in the mobile gaming sphere where he said straight up they work with psychologists to tell them how to make their game more addictive it's like whoa fuck uh, i mean uh, should we be rewarding companies that literally try to make their games more addictive to, so they can fuck people over? Um, that's not healthy. Jade, you're literally mentioning all the companies that I hate. I also hate the AAA industry as much as I hate the mobile industry. And it's nothing personal. I don't hate the people working in mobile. You need a job, you need a job. What are you going to fucking do? I hate the industries as a whole. I, I would love to see the AAA industry burn to the fucking ground. I would love to see the mobile gaming industry burn to the ground because I think indie is the only place where it's still authentic and real. Uh, a lot of indie developers is one or two people working on the game just trying to make a good fun game. Right? They don't have the budget to hire psychologists to make their game more fucking addictive. They don't have the budget to, to implement stores and all the privacy that needs to be taken into account when you have stores in your game. They just make a good game and they hope that some people pick it up and play it. So personally, I would like to see both of those industries burn to the ground or change their ways fundamentally. That is what I want to see. Change their games fundamentally. About how Blizzard tried to fly out Scara, Toast, and a bunch of people to test their new game for eight hours of playtest for no money. They couldn't stream it, they couldn't make a video. They wanted them to just sit down and play test it for eight hours a day and give them feedback for free. And they thought they would just be honored to try a new Blizzard game. And that is like a, that is like a 2002 way of thinking. There's a business reason for this. It's not just like being nice. Mm -hmm. If Toast has been given a lot of money and been treated really well, he's gonna think twice when there's a bug in a game and he wants to like bitch the developer. He's uh -huh. gonna be a little nicer. He's gonna soften his blow. Blizzard, because they pissed everyone off over and over and over and over, when you mess up, they will f Yeah, I, like, I just wanna, I wanna clear something up here, Jade, because I think you're feeling personally attacked, which you shouldn't be, right? You, you shouldn't feel personally attacked. I'm not expecting you to walk into your fucking, ha uh, into your job tomorrow and basically um, scream at your bosses right F for doing better i personally i i don't like it's it's the example it's sort of when i was a kid right and i did something wrong and my parents got angry at me and i'd be like yeah my friends did it and my my mom would always ask me if your friends jumped into the fire would you jump into the fire as well right two wrongs don't make a right the idea that oh we're just we're not doing anything that's different from the pc games it's like yeah both you and the PC games are doing the wrong things. Uh, and I don't think it's sustainable, by the way, Jade. Which is why I think it's a very poor business decision. Because it's not sustainable. When the world economy finally comes crashing down, almost every mobile gaming company is going to find themselves bankrupt. They're going to find themselves with players that don't have the money to actually fucking buy shit. And then suddenly they're going to find themselves having to try and make a fun game because they can't, they can't make games anymore that people just wail on. Right? And then a lot of those gaming companies are going to realize that the developers that work for them have no fucking clue how to make a fun game. Because they didn't get into the gaming industry to make fun games. They got into the gaming industry to make money. right? Um, and then they're going to go bankrupt. It's going to happen with the AAA industry as well. The AAA gaming companies are going to realize very quickly, very soon actually, um, shit. People can no longer afford to pay us because uh, they don't have money because the industry or the world economy has gone to fucking zero. And then uh, they're going to realize these developers don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. Right. And that's the issue. Um, that That's the issue. I think in the long term, you're better off making good, decent, fun games that don't prey on people that don't prey on people's uh, emotions, that don't try to get them to, to open their wallet um, every single five seconds to purchase something. Because, uh, yeah, I, I just think you're, uh, the both gaming industries, uh, both the mobile gaming industry and the AAA gaming industry is sort of playing a very dangerous game of chicken with a fucking train. 
standing on the train tracks, looking into the fucking headlights and going, yeah, let's see who blinks first. And the train's going, bro, I'm not blinking. I can literally go nowhere else. I'm coming for you. I'm going to fucking hit you. And Bobby Kuntik and, and his cohort is going, yeah, we'll, we'll see how much money we can dig out of this mine before the train fucking smashes us. Flip on you. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Boo! That was the worst line ever. Yeah, you guys all have a phone. Yeah, you, all have phone. Phone. Right. you can play on your tablet too. And again, Jesus. in a different environment, had this been the one slip up and the community trusted Blizzard, this one moment probably wouldn't have been such a big a deal. There, it, it just ignites all the resentment that's been building up and people just pounce on it. And every influencer that had a bone to pick with Blizzard watched this clip a hundred times the next day and, and roasted him. Look at this face, by the way. <laughs> um, this was actually one of my most watched videos on my channel ever, I think. Was me reacting to this fucking line. I made so much money out of that BlizzCon. Oh my god, dude. It was fucking glorious. I made so much money out of this BlizzCon. It was surreal. <laughs> this is the face of a man who's got a phone. <laughs> Both of these companies had lawsuits from the state of California about sexist culture. How did they handle those situations differently? So this, this article came out from Kotaku in 2016, inside the culture of sexism at Riot Games. This is before anything was revealed at Blizzard. The immediate response, I, I think the best way to explain this actually, I wanna explain how Riot handles this in, a, in kind of a crass way. This is back when Dave Chappelle was uh, more of a forward thinker and less of a reactionary. <laughs> I agree with you, Jade. I agree actually with everyone in chat here, but yes, I agree with you, Jade. Um, that mobile game, Diablo Immortal, would have been fine if it was announced at some, I don't know, whatever the fuck the equivalent is of mobile conventions. It would have been fine if it was announced there. It probably would have even re been received very, very fun. But you go to a... This is, this is the problem with Blizzard. This is what this video is actually about, by the way. This is the problem with Blizzard. They don't understand the community. They have no fucking clue what the community likes or what the community doesn't like. Uh, the biggest problem that I can see with Blizzard is they went to a convention filled with console and PC gamers and announced a fucking mobile game. That is like going to a Jewish synagogue and saying, I've got a brand new version of fucking Hitler for you guys. Wanna buy it? Say, know your audience, bro. This is not the place to fucking do that. No one's buying. It was just the worst fucking idea ever. When they announced Diablo Immortal, I remember sitting there going, yeah, this is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. This is going to be a fucking nightmare of epic proportions. Epic proportions. Turf. It's one of the jokes, I think, kind of summarizes in a crass way Riot Games' strategy. <laughs> And this is when Kobe Bryant was accused of sexual misconduct. Kobe kept it together. Thank God he, he held his game together because if he was cracking under pressure and getting like six points a game, the whole LA would have been like, that is guilty. <laughs> he was playing like his freedom depended on that Oh, shit. shit. <laughs> you see that motherfucker in them games? This nigga's trying to beat that case on the court. And the idea of beating the case <laughs> wow. on the court. Most people, in my experience, don't give much amount of weight to your words. They don't. Every time something like this happens at a big company, they'll do the same fucking uh, apology. It's like a YouTuber apology. It's it's like a you, nobody yeah, YouTube apologies are the fucking worst, dude. Apology. Blizzard came nope. out and said, uh, "We don't support this type of workplace culture. We're gonna move towards a zero tolerance policy <laughs> oh against sexual harassment." And there was a great bit in Charlie's video where he's like, "Wow." <laughs> Everyone clap that you finally went for a zero tolerance policy. Like that's- I said this. I don't know if you guys remember. But I said this when we read that fucking apology from Blizzard. Just like, how have you not always had a zero? Like what was the policy before? Some touching is okay? Like as long as you don't make the girl too uncomfortable, you can touch her as much as you want. Like what was the fucking policy before? How can you not have always had a zero tolerance policy against sexual harassment? That makes no fucking sense to me. Like who runs a company and goes, yeah, light touching is uh, okay, we suppose, right? Like you can show your dick to the girl, but you can't show your dick and balls to the girl. That's a step too far. Just the dick, that's all right. 
dick and balls, that would be too much for us. Like, why aren't you just having like a proper fucking full on no zero tolerance policy, right? No, no. Apparently, it's now the time for that. It's not fucking normal. And so, what Riot Games sort of did in both these situations, now, they basically litigated those cases on the court. And by that, I mean, they started bawling. <laughs> when this article came out, True, Jane. they followed it up with KDA. <laughs> Their biggest expansion into music yep. of all time. KDA and was all pretty of good. A sudden, People were forgetting. <laughs> Instead of trying to apologize and apologize and apologize and until people like for some reason forgave them, they just dropped something cool. And that's the equivalent of Kobe starting to shoot <laughs> 38 points a game. You know, if you are backed against the wall, your options are crumble or remind people why they liked your company to begin. So I've said this before. When you're at the heart of a cancel campaign, you know, whether it's real or not doesn't really matter so here's the thing with humans right humans automatically our brains have a negativity bias we're drawn to negativity we like negativity we click on negativity if blizzard rides this thing correctly and i have bad news for everyone here that is hoping that blizzard pays for it if blizzard rides this they've already made a bunch of mistakes here but if blizzard rode this correctly they would have come out ahead of where they were like miles ahead. They would have had millions and millions more players playing World of Warcraft than what they have currently because unlike Blizzard, Riot never actually apologized. Riot put out a single article saying, yeah, we'll do better. And then they just kept making more and more content. They just kept pushing more and more, making sure that people just see the good stuff that they're doing now, right? That's it. That's how you ride any sort of cancel uh cancel culture or cancel movement against you you just don't pay attention to it you never apologize you just keep going right you just keep going that's it now in the case of blizzard i think they did the right thing by apologizing the problem is they have nothing to follow that apology up with what Blizzard should have done is apologize, make sure that they have, they're, they're going to put the structures in place to, to fix the stuff so it never happens again, and then BAM! New game. Right? New game. Launches literally a, a week or a month later. You have a new game. Suddenly people are like, oh my god. Oh my god. This is, this is brilliant. Who gives a fuck? And then suddenly people go, yeah, but what about the lawsuits? And people's like... Ugh. What lawsuit? I'm playing video games. Leave me the fuck alone, right? And I'm not saying that's how you should do it because I do think you should actually own your mistake and 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 write that mistake. But um, I want to give you guys an example of someone. Do you guys remember the Me Too stuff that happened? Uh, when was this? 2016, 2017? The whole Me Too in the gaming industry. It was like first the Me Too stuff and then a year later sort of the bombs burst in the gaming industry of like incredible fucking um like all of these gamers got got accused of all manner of fucking dirt shit do you guys remember that not gamergate no 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 not gamergate gamergate happened before the me too movement so this was sort of just after the me too movement um you had bay i don't know if you guys remember bay he used to be a, a rather big world of warcraft youtuber do you guys remember Bay? Final Boss. Yeah, that's the one. So Final Boss TV used to be a very, very big channel. Very big channel. Bay got accused the same way that Swifty got accused, the same way that many others got accused. You want to know the big difference between Bay and Swifty? Ignore the fact that Swifty was actually not uh, guilty. Right? Ignore that fact. Because at the time, no one knew whether Swifty or Bay was guilty or innocent, right? We just had all these accusations and all this shit happened. Um, what was the difference? Swifty just kept making content. Swifty just kept making content. I think he took a couple of days off and then he was right back to making content, as he always did. The difference is Bay stopped. Bay apologized on Twitter for what he had done and then disappeared for months just gone no more content so what happens now everyone believes the story that was told about you in its entirety 
even if some of the things may have been over exaggerated, right? There may have been things that is completely exaggerated and not actually true 100%. Some of it might be true, some of it might not be, but no one will know now, right? Because he disappeared. He sort of just went off the fucking radar. He was hoping that the that things would calm down. The problem is in the time that he hoped for things to calm down, it died. He died. His channel died. You never apologize. You just keep going. Just keep working. If you're actually guilty, make your apology, say you're sorry, and then fucking go, right? Just keep making your content. Don't even pay attention. Of course, you should actually never be caught uh, doing things to girls that they don't actually want you to fucking do. That's like the first big mistake, right? Why are you doing things to people that they don't want you to do to them? But the second big mistake is apologizing and then disappearing. Keep making content. People will move on. People will just not give a fuck. Get back to basics. When uh, the Blitzchunk situation happened, this guy, Blitzchunk, came on screen at a Blizzard event and said, freedom for Hong Kong, the glorious revolution of our age, something like that. Uh, the casters literally hid from the camera and they were all fired, including the casters, which was absolutely ludicrous. Extreme, extreme over the top response. Yeah. <laughs> Denied him his prize money. Denied him um, a place in the Hall of Fame. Banned him for life from, from Blizzard events. It got extreme negative pushback. Everyone rose up. Of course, oh, censorship you know. is terrible. By the way, this is an American company, Blizzard, owned by an Luna American Drake. Company, how you doing? Activision. <laughs> Riot Games, one hundred percent wholly owned by Tencent. <laughs> they they also banned the speech about it. They did it quietly. <laughs> They did not make a big show of it. They didn't make a big show. Oh, I remember this. Uh, how many of you watch League of Legends Worlds? How many of you watch the world's League of Legends? Pay attention whenever a team from Hong Kong plays. There's a team, a decent team from, from Hong Kong that almost makes it to Worlds every single year. All of the Riot casters say HK. They don't actually say Hong Kong. They say HK something. They're they're HK something. They they don't actually say the words Hong Kong. Because China doesn't allow that, right? Because Hong Kong is China. It's not supposed to be a separate place. So they just don't they don't they don't, they don't say it. The difference is, as he said here, Riot does things quietly. They don't do things publicly. They don't make a spectacle. They just do things. HK gaming, that's the one, Jade. Thanks, yes. HK gaming. Uh, they don't say Hong Kong gaming. Uh, I, I once heard one of the casters misspoke and he sort of went honk HK gaming. <laughs> immediately pulled it back. Like He said honk uh, and then he was like uh, HK gaming. Like, he immediately pulled it back. Just realized, uh, nope, that's not a good idea. We shouldn't say Hong Kong on uh, on this. I could get fired. Of course. And then the second anyone started talking about this, because this started to get some pickup on Reddit, people were like, hey, what the, what the hell is this? They dropped Project A and Project L. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm talking like the same week. That is called litigating on the court. Uh, avoid talking endlessly about your weaknesses because it never changes. Now, this is mostly about Blizzard versus Riot, but I wanted to do a quick jab here at Valve because I found this tweet today. <laughs> Valve has a, a multi-decade head start on competitive shooters. <laughs> They've got one of the most beautiful games of all time in CSGO. They've mm -hmm. got a thriving esports scene. Yeah. They've got a thriving um, marketplace. And they have simply, uh, apparently, no time or effort okay. to invest in, in growing and updating the game at the level of other major publishers. The debate over what is a better game, Val Valorant or CSGO, is kind of irrelevant from a business POV. Because CSGO... <laughs> is not attracting new players at the same rate as Valorant. That, that's it. <laughs> Legends of Runeterra, I, I'm comparing this to Heroes of the Storm because these are two games that launched and haven't done that well. On Blizzard's side, they canceled the game. They cancel it. They give no warning. They ruin the esports well, that's Riot angry. has continued to support esports for this game and, in fact, are trying to pivot into other areas that might make it more entertaining. They've mm -hmm. noticed people aren't really enjoying the, the competitive aspect of it that much. So they're making a uh, PVE mode. As a third example, think of Valve with, um, I can't even remember the name. What was that card game they launched? <laughs> uh, Artifact. Oh, yeah. Artifact. Artifact was the biggest <laughs> failure Artifact ever. Artifact was dead? Not only from Like the, the most success Artifact had was when Twitch streamers figured out the bug within Artifact. Like you could, you could say, I can't remember exactly what you did, but you could set your, um, 
your game to artifact and then you did something else and then suddenly you'd be like everywhere like everyone could see. so obviously trolls took part in that used the artifact and showed porn on the streams so suddenly porn was everywhere on twitch uh because obviously that's what trolls do right but that was the biggest success artifact they've ever had from the player base but from the developer like valve pretended they didn't release it one week in valve was like oh <laughs> that's not our game <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know whose game that is this is riot in 2017. oh this was, was such a good live. fucking world amazing this was such a good opening show dragons are real was the dragon real oh totally no it's an amazing ar dragon but this is this is the first of its kind they had a massive ass stadium they got a huge ass fucking AR dragon. It's a cool fucking thing. It's memorable. It's yep. innovative. In yep. the same year. This is Overwatch League. I never saw this, but I heard it was cringe as fuck. The DJ Khaled uh, at Overwatch opening sequence. It was like, from everyone that I heard and on Twitter, I was like, okay, I'm, it's good I never watched this. I've never been a fan of, of DJ Khaled to begin with. I don't even know why DJ Khaled would do something for Overwatch. Like, is he really... Like, Overwatch reminds me of sort of... It's similar to League of Legends in that you want almost anime-esque kind of music with it. So you're either going to go with something like K-pop or you're going to go with uh, Imagine Dragons, which does a lot of sort of futuristic uh, fantasy sort of themed music. I, I don't know if DJ Khaled, if I think Overwatch, I don't think DJ Khaled. <laughs> so you can see okay. which company was innovating. And by the way, franchises in that League of Legends tournament you saw, about a million to three million dollars. Franchises in the Overwatch League? 60 million dollars for your team to be featured next to dj Khaled in a, a smaller stadium blizzard overcharged over promised and under delivered and riot did the opposite and so when you add all that up all that innovation on riot side um in a number okay. of ways in the way they're approaching tv music uh game development uh connected ip treating their talent better and and then exploitation on the, on the blizzard side where they're basically just using influence well, what's funny about just the little clips we saw now from dj Khaled is you have to feel very bad for a singer, right? He's standing up there, he's fucking waving his arms, and the crowd is literally like, fuck is this? Like, the dude is fucking, I don't know, sort of doing his step on stage, and everyone is just like, all right, cool. <laughs> Influencers Still rich, though, sure. Relationship ...where they're exploiting their own developers, and where they're dropping games so they don't make a quick buck for them has led to this in this past week. <laughs> and that is a complete, oh. total collapse of yep. Blizzard stock market price. <laughs> that is a rough a fucking Jesus. They are a third less valuable and heading lower. <laughs> and there is no near-term catalysts that are gonna change this. You might be thinking, okay, well, they'll bounce back when they get, when they get more uh, games or money. But the truth is- You see, I actually think this guy left out something very crucial. Um, so Riot Games have done something that very few gaming companies have ever really been able to capitalize on. Riot Games have managed to make, or sort of build a universe around League of Legends and specifically the League of Legends, Legends esports scene, right? Uh, think about the incredible artists we've seen that every year, Blizzard ha or, or Riot Games have a specific theme song written by some kind of hot new artist specifically for the League of Legends World Championships, right? Um, every year, you go on Riot, you, you go right now and you Google it, you'll find all of those songs, Imagine Dragons, KDA, all of these fucking, uh, all of these songs, incredible songs, it builds around the audience. It brings people from everywhere because people listen to the songs, don't know exactly what the songs is about, realize it's about League of Legends, maybe I'll go watch a bit. So Riot uh, may be one of the best marketing teams in the gaming industry right now. When you're 
when your company has such negative momentum like this and such bad PR, what you end up with is a brain drain. This is the biggest threat to a company of Blizzard's size. Yep. And that is where your talent starts leaking. I will say the brain drain for Blizzard Entertainment have happened a long time ago, but the brain drain, we've actually discussed this uh, in the past, right? Where if you go and look at um, Steve Jobs, he has an interview where he speaks about IBM and uh, HP, right? And and he makes it clearer there. You, There's a point where companies reach a size where marketing becomes more important than the product. So the engineers and the innovative people who work at the company start leaving for other companies. And the reason they leave is the company no longer cares about bringing out a better product. They just care about getting their shitty product to more people. Right? And that's sort of where Blizzard is right now. That's where most of the AAA industry is. They, they don't care about a good product. What they care about is getting more people to play their shitty product. So everything goes into marketing. That's why World of Warcraft currently, if you look at every single expansion that comes out, they do so much work to make sure that the marketing is on point. So many of the systems that is announced with new expansions is marketing based, right? It, it's systems that purely exist because it will look good on a gaming poster. Not because it will necessarily be fun, not because people will necessarily want to play it, but it will look good on a marketing poster, it will get people to click on the advertisement. Uh, and that's really all that matters. Every expansion, every patch that comes out, the PTR serves as a marketing machine, just meant to get more people to, to sub so that more people can, can join in. Uh, their six-month sub has become a marketing tool with its own sort of values and its own inputs to make sure that it gets maximum exposure. Because th they don't want to make a great game that gets people to play. That's a lot of work. It's cheaper to just market the game as as much as possible to as many people as possible and then hope that you get you get to make a quick buck. Um, what's the what, what's the the solution to that? Sadly, there's no quick solution. The solution comes usually after a couple of years or a decade or more. The solution is usually you die, right? Your company dies, um, or it it does so badly that it has to has to pivot into new areas. That's sort of the only solution you end up with. Leaving, and with Blizzard, this has been meteoric. This is four studios formed in the past like year and a half. These are all ex Blizzard, and that leaves them with no talent to True. make the game and save the company. Not only are you losing people, but you can't hire anybody. Blizzard generally relied on the Blizzard cloud. Company's cultural issues and their goodbye speeches. The subject, the subtext was, uh, our culture is at odds with our team's culture, and that didn't think they could fix it with the current leadership. Oof. They would say, hey, we don't pay more than anyone else, but having Blizzard on your resume is a dope thing. They told me this when I'm applying there. Even after all of this, after all of this, at the end of the day, Blizzard has one thing that is keeping it going. The dark, bleeding heart of Blizzard is World of Warcraft money. <laughs> there are a class of people that are simply unable to leave WoW. They've put too much of their life and time into it. Have I not said this before? I think I've said this before. They are hooked, and they print money for Blizzard for decades now. WoW is what keeps Blizzard Blizzard. And I want to end this presentation with this. <laughs> a website that went up on Riot Games' page. Yeah. Hiring. Yeah. For the League of Legends MMO. This, to this me, is going to be massive. More than anything else, looks like the end of Blizzard. That's a tale of two companies of the past few years, Riot and Blizzard, and what their different strategies have led to different outcomes. And that's Marketing Monday. Hope you enjoy. The truth is that if... If Riot can pull off their MMO, if they can make a competent, decent MMO, I do think that Blizzard is in trouble. I think Blizzard might be in trouble then. The truth is that almost every World of Warcraft player that you've ever met, uh, think about your friends, the people that you play with. Almost every single Blizzard player or World of Warcraft player have played or have heard about League of Legends. 
So this isn't some obscure game that's going to come out of obscurity that no one has ever heard of. This is going to be a massive game that is going to speak directly to those players and maybe wants to try it, right? That's the thing. They're going to want to give it a go. If the game works, if the game is good, if the game actually delivers on the promises that it makes, I can, I can see Blizzard being in some real trouble with this because Riot almost definitely has the budget for it. Almost definitely has the budget for it. Can we remove the um the the ban from Jade or the timeout from Jade? Sorry about that, Jade. Uh, only subs can can link in the channel. We had some problem with spam uh, and people stealing people's information. So if you wanna if you wanna link something, link it to me on Discord. 